Hello, hello, and I'm Alice Cowboy back again with uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, uh, today is just um, going on a little jaunt into the town of Valentine, um, taking uh, one of the character well, four of the characters from the camp. One of them was named Uncle. He's the guy in the box seat, and um, oh, um, oh. Yeah, this, um... <laughs> right, let's uh, just switch back to empty-handed. Yeah, these two ladies are um, from the camp. Is one of you gonna get that fella's horse? Oh, I got lumbago. Very serious. I thought you wanted to head into town. Yes, but this won't take long. Look at the poor fella. Well, oh, this is a poor fella. You all right there, friend? Oh, hey, you couldn't help me get my other horse back from over there, could you? I guess so. I'd really appreciate the help. I'm worried this one here will blow down me too if I leave it. You can do it, Arthur. Not if he's running away. To our way. There we go. There we go. I just calm him down a bit. There you go, mister. Here you go. You're a gentleman, sir. A gentleman. No, not really. I was just trying to impress the women. <laughs> well, anyway, thank you. Come on, let's go. To Valentine. <laughs> <laughs> You're turning into a regular old fairy godmother there, Arthur. What's that supposed to mean? It means you got a heart. A small one, perhaps, hidden deep inside, but a real one. And you haven't, your pulse of old lizard. Well, lizards have hearts. Well, Arthur, I'm proud of you. To be honest, if you not hadn't been here, I probably would have robbed him. <laughs> well, you did. <laughs> <laughs> back up there you think we should have asked molly to come with us oh no miss o'shea is far too high and mighty now for the likes of us or to do any real work she's a society lady now okay take a good look around ladies Let's see what we got here go left here down the main street Some city boss there's always on the right 
Sure you can pick up some bounties there, Arthur. Heaven forbid you put your head on the line. Yeah, well, that's a young man's game. <laughs> Ooh, yes! We can get up to some mischief here, all right. Just remember, keep a low profile. Will you remember that, though, Arthur? Probably not. Let's park up down the end there, near the stables. Okay, look. <laughs> all right. Here we are, just like I said. The cultural center of civilization. <laughs> Man at his finest. Uncle, what are we doing? Well, we're gonna do what any self-respecting maniac does. Put the women to work. <laughs> With pleasure. We'll start at the saloon. Okay, just stay out of trouble and don't get yourselves noticed. Right, I need to get something from the stores. Okay, well, we'll see you at the general store when you're done. Come on, ladies. Imagine we're in Paris. Come on. So that's how you see yourself, is it? A maniac? Well, it... In my youth, I used to be known as the one-shot kid. <laughs> okay. I'm not gonna ask why. You are a sad man, Arthur Morgan. But I know you love me. Desperately. You're my favorite parasite. No. Ringworm's my favorite parasite. You're my second favorite parasite. Very funny. I lied. Ringworm. Then... Rats with the plague, then you. Shut up. This is the place now. Come on. Morning. So, what do you need? Drop a whiskey for a start. Well, something to pass the time while we're waiting on the women. Yeah. That guy should probably steer clear of the saloon this time. You're looking a bit tired there, Arthur. Why don't you pick up some coffee while we're here? Let me know if you have any questions, fellers. Whiskey's on the top shelf, nearest the door. Wait, ain't you the feller who had the fight with Tommy outside the saloon? Yeah, that all got a little out of hand, but I didn't swing first. <laughs> sure, well, these things happen. And that was some good viewing. Don't reckon folk ever seen Tommy lose a fight before. Well, it's all done now. Oh, here's to your good health, sir. <laughs> and to being down here off that mountain. Absolutely. It's a funny world, you know. This time in my career, I pictured myself being married to an heiress. Gentlemen, I think I got something good. What? What? I snuck into this fancy house. Acted like a servant girl. Usually works. Someone was saying her sister was taking a trip from New York or someplace. Train full of rich tourists heading to San Dene and then cruising off to Brazil. Okay. A train laden with baggage and passing through a bit of deserted country at night. As to get to the docks in time for the tides. In some place called Scarlet Meadows. Yeah, I know it. Yeah, yeah, it's right out near New Hanover. <laughs> right, it's real quiet out there. Sounds good. Uh, Where's Tilly and Karen? I think at the hotel. They were picking up some drunken fellas that they was gonna rob. Why? It seemed easy. They have been gone for quite a while. I guess I'll go see if there's any trouble. Oh, <laughs> there's Tilly over there. That does not look ideal. Excuse me. Get your hands off me. You thought I wouldn't find you, Tilly. You can go kiss a damn snake for all I care. Get off me! Get off of me! Get your hands off mm. her, friend. Who are you? A friend of mine. Get off her. <laughs> or what exactly? You want to find out? You're making a big mistake, Tilly Jackson. Just get lost. I ain't doing this with you. Go right away now. with Uncle and Mary Beth. They're across the street. Okay. Thanks, Arthur. I'm going, ain't I? Oh! 
Welcome. Look after her. I'll go see about Karen in the hotel. Who's got miles? Can I help you, sir? I'm looking for a girl who came in here earlier with a drunk feather. Mid-twenties, blonde. You'd remember her. Yeah, they're in 2B upstairs. Are you, uh, a friend of his? A friend of hers. No trouble now, please! friend of hers. Get out of here, buddy. I paid. Ain't paid a hitter, you goddamn animal. Come here! Uh, uh, Stay out of my way. What the hell are you doing here? Trying to play him. Not very well. You okay? Fine. You sure? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing to worry about. Just men. But stupid bastard. Stupid bastard was boasting about the bank. The bank? Sure, I know small town banks are usually a waste of time, but this is a livestock town. There's lots of cash sometimes. Okay. Keep investigating. I will. I hope uh, everything's okay up there. It's after you. Thank you, Arthur. I don't much like being saved, but when I have to be. I understand. You okay? Sure. He only punched oh. me. Arthur punched him a lot harder. Yeah. All right, then. Hey, who's that guy over there looking at us? Weren't you in Blackwater a few weeks back? Me? No, sir. Ain't from there. Oh, you were. Well, I definitely saw you with a bunch of fellers. Me? No. Impossible. Listen, buddy, come here for a minute. I saw you. Come here. Come on, get up. I don't like this. Me neither. Go get Me neither. I'm gonna go have a word with our friend. Be careful, Arthur. Just a word. Yeah. Get back! That's my horn. Just following it. You stay away from me. Get back here right now. Oh no. Where did he go? Oh, there he is. Why are you telling lies about me? No, no. I, I, I got it wrong, partner. I got it very wrong. Now please help me up. I ain't never been in black water. Th then why are you chasing me? I've got an unfortunate face. Yes. <laughs> unfortunate face. Now please pull me up. Please. Just pull me up. Come on. All right. Come on. You okay, partner? No. No, I am not. I'm a mess. Well, you ain't dead. There is that. Jimmy Brooks. I think it's best for both of us if we pretend this never happened. Well, I agree. You saved my life. You're a good man, and I, uh, here, you want a pen? It's one of them steel ones. Oh, that's very kind of you. <laughs> but I'm not a good man, Jimmy Brooks. Not usually. You see, I was in Blackwater. I killed people. And maybe I should have killed you. Should I have killed you, Jimmy Brooks? 
Me? I never saw you. Not, not now, not, not never. I think we have an understanding? Of course we do. Jimmy Brooks. <laughs> I will remember that. I've got a good memory. I haven't. I haven't. Not, not one lick. Not one sense in this year old mind. Come on. Come on. You have a nice day now, sir. Am I glad to see you? Here's your horse back, friend. Oh, you really were just borrowing it. Appreciate it. As I was looking at the uh, map to decide what to do next, I noticed an icon just outside of the town of Valentine saying show. So I've just ridden over, I want to find out what the show is. Before we go in and see the show, let's have a look at the posters. Sailors and Savages. A trip at, around the world. Um, the fir Mr. Bear's first winter. I guess. See what passes for culture in the eighteen nineties. Not the only tent there. <laughs> Settlers used to tell about the woods of Massachusetts and the creatures that lived there. One summer, a bear was by the stream, and old man Wind appeared and said, Bear, I shall blow a mighty cold upon the land, and gorge yourself on fish and meat, and go find a den. Then sleep, not for one night, but for sixty. Go tell all the animals of the forest what I have told you. Bear was sad because the fish were his friends, and now he had to eat them. But he knew to do whatever the wind told him. The animals <laughs> of the forest teased Bear and said he was slow. Th this is quite accurately based on um, reality of the times. Uh, th there were travelling picture shows like this. The magic lantern um, pictures. And he's getting so rotund that even I could outrun him. I'm smart and quick, said Rabbit. I'll outrun old man. That's the projector thing there. Uh, although it's not quite like a film projector. If wind comes, I'll just hide my shell. Then Bear went and warned Coyote and Possum that they should prepare for a long, cold winter. It's so hot, said the Coyote. There's plenty of time. The lazy Possum said, Well, there's an abundance of food. Maybe I'll just store some in my pouch. 
Even his squirrel friends made fun of Bear. They laughed and laughed and squibbled and squabbled. Chunky needs a nap. Fanny Goody Two Shoes does what he's told. Bear was very sad. But he was a good bear, and he always did what Old Man Wind told him. He went and found a den, snuggled inside, and fell fast asleep. Bear snored and snored for many days. When he woke up, he saw spring had come. He was very hungry, so he walked outside. As the snow melted, he saw all his friends who hadn't listened frozen and just ready to be eaten. And that's why the bear hibernates. So listen to your elders and do just what you're told. So, I thought it was it. Um, well, okay yes, in, um, in a time that was quite big entertainment, obviously, compared with nowadays, it is um, pretty pitiful. But, um, yeah, that's, that's the 1890s for you. Right, I think this is a suitable place to round up the episode. Um, I wouldn't see the Magic Pitch show, which admittedly wasn't that great. Um, it, it, it was interesting because it was accurate to the time. Um, and uh, um, just the trip into Valentine overall has been not packed with excitement, but um, it shows a bit about um, the characters of the people in camp. And... Um, Yes, we got a few things done. But anyway, I am Albus Cowboy. Thanks for watching, and until next time, happy trails.